the soda is back. I detoxed for a week. Now it's back in full swing. Hi, my name is Lil Omar and welcome back to another video. I need to start looking at the camera. Camera, camera, eyeballs, camera, I'm good. Hi, I'm Lil Omar and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is gonna be a lot like my first one. Um, so it is another Q&A about a job that I've done. In this case, Night Squad. I had kind of suggested this in the first video just in case anyone that watched that show as well wanted to get into the details of it and hear a lot of behind the scenes stories. And there was a couple people that did. That's cool. Um, so I went onto my Instagram and I asked you guys to ask any questions you had regarding my character, the show, yada yada. And that's what we're going to do today. There was a lot of fun questions in there. Yeah, I was able to pick out some. So uh, hopefully this uh, video will be entertaining and not boring, yeah. Love entertainment. So I know in my last video I did not have any subtitles whatsoever. Um, sorry. I just, yeah, my camera made me go through hell and I just, I had no time. Cause I literally, we literally edited everything like the night before that we posted it. So yes, this time, so titles are provided. Yes, so there will be both in Spanish and in English because I will be answering both Spanish and English questions. Yes. Okay, my brain seems to be working today. I'm able to make complete sentences. Uh, this shouldn't be too much editing, hopefully. I really hope I didn't just jinx that. Okay, without further ado, I think this intro is pretty concise, pretty short. I am proud of myself. We're starting off great. Without further ado, let's get to the first question. How was the stunt process like and how long did you guys train for? Um, it was all a really fun process. The stunt team was just... Phenomenal. They're incredibly skilled at what they do. They were super patient with us and they're just like literally the coolest people ever. <laughs> um, for our first official filming week, which was technically the second episode because we shot the original pilot back in late 2017, we had one whole week where it was just dedicated to stunt training. So fun! At that point, it wasn't really established which weapon was gonna be each character's favorite, like designated weapon, so we just kind of practiced all of the above. I remember doing lots of regular combat, different landing positions, uh, sword choreos, staff choreos, which for me was the most useful since in the end, Sage's like favorite weapon ended up being the spear. Girl, you don't know how many times I hit myself upside the head with that thing, but I loved it, you know? I, it, it, I felt powerful. I really did. But yeah, it was so much fun. The whole stunt team was super great and amazing. And I'm glad we got to meet them, to learn from them, um, and stay friends. So yeah, shout out to the stunt team. God, I miss them. They're a mess. They're a crazy mess. And I just, I love it. It's a mess you want to be a part of. You know what I mean? I love them. ¿Cómo fue trabajar con María Canales Barrera cuando actuó de la mamá de Sage? Oh my God. Um, la amo tanto. <laughs> Yo veía a María cuando chiquitica en Wizards of Waverly Place y cuando mi manager en ese tiempo me dijo que la actriz que iba a ser mi mamá era ella, el grito que metí, o sea, ella es un amor de persona, es extremadamente profesional, obvio, y de verdad que fue un honor trabajar con ella. Y ojalá mi familia y la de ella podamos todos reunirnos otra vez cuando ella se acabe de ir el virus este. Yeah. Why do you always play the villain or the mean girl? <laughs> I've actually gotten this question a lot and not just when I told you guys to send in some questions for this video. Um, as actors, the idea is to tell as many true human stories as you can, right? To learn, understand, and to put in the work for each and every single character that you do so that you can succeed in playing characters that may be even the complete opposite of the real you. However, as performers, there are just certain characters that are more natural to embody, you know what I mean? For me, that just happens to be characters that are really confident and fun or overly confident and arrogant or just hyper or- Evil, just evil. <laughs> I, I usually have to take a little more time to break down and study characters that are a bit more on the shy side or awkward or just, I don't know, naturally like cutesy and quirky. I usually say that's due to the fact that in real life I am a bit more outspoken and maybe confident or I like to say things just straight up and very honestly and I like to be loud and have fun and I, uh, I like to be very social. So maybe these types of characters 
it's easy for me to find those things. It's easy for me to put that, um, to put that there. So when it comes to characters that are a bit more on the quiet side, I have to find that within myself. I have to find a way to make that come out naturally. As an actor, your priority is understanding the character that you're given, separating their person or their perspectives from your own. Since I was young too, I've always had a fascination with like evil characters or just troubled characters, characters that have so much going on in their mind that they're just a challenge to figure out. All in all, I'm really happy playing any and every type of character, just the evil ones have a little bit more fun. ¿Cuál fue el outfit que más te gustó de tu personaje? Había unos cuantos. Me encantaban mucho los corsets que Sage tenía en su closet. Uh, ya que además de tener unos diseños muy elegantes, eh, muchos de esos fueron usados en otras películas. Como por ejemplo, muchos de nuestros accesorios fueron usados en la película Snow White and the Huntsman. Lo que sí no me gustaban eran los pantalones. ¿Qué va? O sea, no me malinterpreten, los pantalones estaban muy lindos. El problema venía que cuando teníamos que hacer escenas de peleas me hacían la vida un taco. Yo tratando de enfocarme en la coreografía, en no partirme una pierna o romper la cabeza a alguien del elenco y los pantalones se caían, ay cuánto pican, ay no, 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 demasiado. <laughs> How much did Beck and Scatter actually do? <laughs> I bet they slept the whole time. <laughs> You're right, they did absolutely nothing. I'm kidding. Um, for those of you who don't know, Beck and Scatter refers to two of our producers slash writers from the show, uh, John Beck and Ron Hart. They've also worked on shows like uh, Love and Maddie, Fuller House, etc. I remember among the cast, especially Savannah and I, we were low-key fangirling about the fact that we were going to get to work with them. <laughs> They're also just incredibly sweet human beings. They're hysterical. They're great to work with. They were honestly a really essential part of the team. I would never say that to their faces though. Literally would never hear the end of it. ¿Te llevaste algún objeto de Sage como recuerdo al final de la serie? Sí, me pude llevar blusas que me gustaron como esta, uno, eh, la roja, eh, creo que me pude llevar otra más que no me acuerdo cuál es, y también este suéter. ¡Ja! Nunca me lo he puesto, pero aquí está. Oh, y para los que no lo saben, en el episodio donde Sage hizo este suéter, la señora que ven sentada al lado mío cosiendo era mi abuela. Si no sabes, ahora lo sabes. Ah! Also, by the end, I think, of the show, I don't know if it was for my birthday or my graduation or the end of the series, it was some sort of celebratory event that my mom and grandma had this done. It's my own stage doll! I'm a doll! You know, since Barbie doesn't want to entertain me. Um, they went to the hair department and they were able to get her hair done. Um, they went to props and they were in the, the art department. They were able to make her spear, all these cute little things. And yeah, they, uh, she's cool, isn't she? Yeah, I have her in my living room. <laughs> Why did it end? Ask the network. Why was season two short? Ask the network. What happened at the end? I don't. ¿Dónde se grabó? Saludos desde México. Saludos. En la primera temporada la grabamos en los estudios de Paramount y la segunda temporada la grabamos en los estudios de Las Palmas, que antes se llamaba Hollywood Center Studios. Uh, Paramount, obvio, es una belleza y ahí han grabado un servillón de proyectos legendarios, lo que sí es tremenda caminata. El lugar es inmenso. Tiene sus propias calles. Calles. Pero bueno, eh, nos hacía bien el ejercicio y de vez en cuando nos dejaban montarnos en los carritos de golf. El otro estudio era mucho más pequeño, pero igual de lindo, muy tranquilito y había un hombre francés que era el dueño de una pequeña cafetería que tenía ahí. Ah, ¿Cómo lo extraño? Así un café. ¿Y unos sándwiches? Why couldn't you guys recognize that Ciara was the princess? Oh my god. Do you have any idea how much we questioned this on set? Our characters were clowns, man. We laughed about our characters' slight stupidity very often while shooting. But in the end, we were just like, eh, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. En España se llama Escuela de Caballería, ¿lo sabías? Sí, claro. 
Honestamente, yo diría como 50 nombres. <ríe> en un lugar es escuadrón de caballeros, en otro lugar es eh, escuela de caballería, en otro es academia de caballería y en otro se llama escuadrón de honor, así que imagínate. <ríe> How did you get the role? I auditioned for it. ¿Audicionaste específicamente para tu personaje? Sí. Eh, bueno, al principio me habían mandado eh, ir a la sesión de productores como Ciara, pero en ese momento había dicho que no. Eh, después me mandaron el personaje de Sage. Y en el guión original, Sage era una bestia. ¡Me encantó! Era la propia hija de Maléfica, la chiquita esa. <risa> en ese entonces, Sage tenía poderes mágicos, es decir, era una hechicera. Ella no tenía Buttercup uh, como amiga porque Buttercup en ese entonces todavía no estaba en el guión. Y Sage no era pesada, era completamente malvada. <risa> She was fabulous. So fabulous. Eventualmente, antes de oficialmente grabar el primer episodio, eh, cambiaron muchas cosas de Sage para que el show pudiera llegar a audiencias más jóvenes. Yo había aclarado que si los chiquillos empiezan a imitar al antagonista de un programa, eh, es problema de los padres que tienen que enseñarlo, no mío. Yo vine a hacer mi trabajo. Why didn't Sage and Ciara get along? Here's the deal. Sage, before Ciara came along, was a bit of an undefeated student. She was incredibly passionate about being a knight and she was undeniably really good at it. She liked being number one. She liked being on top 24-7. After Ciara, I think that was the first time she actually felt true competition. It was never a jealousy thing since her want to be number one went much deeper than just bragging rights. Although, in the end, that's what made their relationship so special in its own way. Their rivals, and both Ciara and Sage were happy to have it that way. Because even though neither of them would admit it openly to each other, they motivated each other. Eventually, Sage's main reason for wanting to become a knight so badly was revealed, and the things that she kept most hidden were also revealed in one of her only vulnerable moments. Which I won't get too deep into just in case anyone wants to come at me first. Yeah. Even though the show's been over, some of y'all gotta catch. Oh. Are you actually as mean as your character? <laughs> What kind of question? Yes, actually, I am as mean as my character. In fact, I am... Ten times worse. ¿Por qué Sage no cambia de actitud? Eh, porque no le dio la gana. <laughs> Sage, Sage es Sage. Ella es un personaje que no necesita reírse de todo ni hacerse amiga de todo el mundo. Ella estaba extremadamente enfocada en sus metas y no iba a dejar que nadie le quitara su gran felicidad y su motivación. Sage era un personaje extremadamente seguro de sí misma, sin miedos, leal a su mejor amiga y muy enfocada en ella y su futuro sin tiempo para distracciones. De cierta manera yo admiraba mucho a Sage y me gustó que estábamos presentando a este tipo de personaje a, a los niños. Siempre he dicho que muchas veces hay padres que le han dejado el trabajo de enseñanza a los artistas. Muchas veces los niños aprenden cosas sobre la vida y otras personas viéndonos a nosotros en shows o películas. Es muy importante, pienso yo, enseñar que hay millones de diferentes personas en esta vida con diferentes personalidades, perspectivas, temperamentos, prioridades, etc. Y hay que aprender a no juzgar a las personas, a conocer sus historias y coexistir de manera pacífica. Why didn't Sage have a love interest on the show? Ooh. <laughs> Just reminds me of that. Okay. I'm serious. Honestly, none of us really had love interests on the show. Um, I think our characters were much more preoccupied with staying alive and making sure they became knights than just finding any old high school crush. You know, priorities. Sage specifically, it's kind of hard to see her taking an interest in anybody. <laughs> She just had so much on her plate and so many priorities to take care of first that a love interest I think wasn't really necessary for her character. I think also, as a show, um, the writers, the producers, everybody I think was a little more focused on teaching kids different things. Personally, I think that a lot of kids shows over the years had focused a lot on love interests and middle school, high school relationships and stuff like that. And I think once you get more into the shows like Victoria's and such that are high school kids, you can bring that into the script. But if you're going for a younger audience, I would prefer to just avoid it all together because kids copy what they see and I don't know I just I'd rather focus on teaching kids things that are a little bit more important and concepts that they should be learning at that age 
rather than trying to mimic the whole boyfriend-girlfriend thing. I think the main thing too is teaching kids to love themselves first, to rely on themselves first, to have a special place for their family, to develop friends and develop their social skills rather than immediately getting into relationships and oh, I need another person to complete me, I need to be with someone, blah, blah, blah. Because I think that in a certain way, especially at such a young age, teaches kids to be codependent. So yeah, I'm all for making sure kids live out each age as they should and not, not rushing it, you know? <laughs> well, I hope you liked that. I hope you learned something new today, kiddos. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great week. And yeah, if this wasn't too atrocious to watch, give it a like, leave me a comment if you wanna share your thoughts with me, and subscribe and turn on your bell because it will let you know whenever I post. Like I mentioned before, I post whenever I want. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye.